Okay. All right. So we're now live and active online. Um, so while we've got our people joining us there, uh, welcome to you all who are here with us physically this morning for this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And also happy Father's Day to any fathers who are with us. Uh, as we get started with our service, uh, for those who are here, please note everything you need is in your bulletin. Uh, for those who are with us online, uh, there's a link in the description that will give you the bulletin as well as the readings for today. So with that said, let us go ahead and get started with our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we beseech thee, make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. For thou never failest to help and govern those whom thou hast set upon the sure foundation of thy loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. The first lesson is from the book of Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that doth this counsel by words without knowledge? Get, gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurement? Surely you know. For who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? For who laid its cornerstone and the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? For who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds, its garments, and thick darkness, its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther. Here shall your proud ways be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Please read responsibly from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those who are Lord and redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the Lord. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to see the sea of ships, and far the tree of the waters. They beheld the works of the Lord, and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed by the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens, and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. 
He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercies and the wonder he still has for their children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As the Lord is given in, is now and ever shall be, for without The second letter is from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, but purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our afflictions, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great whirlwind arose. The waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased. There was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
Many years ago in my ministry, there was a time that I kept getting piled on and piled on with more and more work. I had already been teaching several classes at this point, and then all of a sudden, one of our Sunday school teachers at the last minute uh, dropped uh, the class uh, that this teacher was, was leading, and I was the only one that could step in at that particular time and fill that spot. To make matters worse, I was also recovering from a sports injury from my running and was, was still in the process of slowly recovering from that. So with all this work and with all these other things going on in my life, at this time, I wasn't taking the opportunities, I wasn't putting in the time and the effort to build up my connection, to build up my relationship with God. And that was particularly in failing to continue to do my monthly retreat. So even in the midst of all these troubles, I didn't really feel God present there with me. During this time, there was one day that my diocese came up to me and asked if I would help out with a spiritual workshop that they were doing one weekend. And the work, it wasn't, it wasn't too much. It wasn't a big role that they were going to have me do. And it was also something that I thought I'd enjoy doing. And it happened that this was occurring at the time when confirmation preps and baptismal preps had come to an end. So I thought, you know, why not do one more thing? Well, it turns out that this was the best thing I could have done. Because one of the priests who was helping with this workshop um, had to leave early, and it happened to be the person that was going to be celebrating the Eucharist at the end of the workshop. And so I was asked if I wouldn't mind uh, filling that role to helping this group celebrate the Eucharist. And I'm glad that I did, because it was in that moment, in that moment of the Eucharist, that I felt God present. For the first time in a long time, I felt God there with me. When we're in the midst of our troubles, when we're in the midst of those difficult things in our lives, it's often hard for us to feel God present. And that doesn't have anything to do with the fact that God is there. But it has everything to do with us not paying attention, not being open to God's presence. Job is a great place for us to start in seeing God present, even in our hardships. Because Job is the book the most famous story about everything going wrong. Job, as we learn about in this book, is a good and pious man. But then everything, one after another, everything bad that can possibly happen to him does. And most of the book is a look at particularly in his conversations with his friends, particularly his friends trying to lead him to this, it's their journey to try to figure out what it is that Job could have possibly done wrong to lead to all of this. But Job's goal is a little bit different. Job instead just wants a face-to-face -face with God. And in our reading earlier this morning, that's exactly what Job gets. 
we get the beginning of this conversation that he has with God, of God coming down and finally speaking to Job. And we don't get it at this point. But later down the road in that soliloquy that God gives, God uses the same words that Job did with his friends earlier. What God's trying to do is point out to Job that he's been there listening the whole time. And Job's final response to God is best translated as being comforted. This is what Job needed to hear. Job is comforted by the fact that even though he's gone through all these difficulties, God has still been there listening the whole time. God has been present with him throughout it all. We get a similar event and story in our reading in the gospel today, too. There we see the disciples and Jesus going out on their boats, and then all of a sudden, this whirlwind comes. The, the waves and the storm comes about. And the disciples think that they're going to die. But Jesus is there with them this whole time, albeit asleep. But that's the point of all of this. That Jesus, that God, even in the midst of their worst troubles, is still there. It can be hard for us in the midst of our troubles to really feel God's presence. And that's what we see with both Job and with the disciples. And it's why God chastises Job and Jesus chastises his disciples at the end. Jesus asks them, where is your faith? Where is your trust, even? Why can't you see that God is there? In God's words, that I am there with you, even in the midst of your sufferings. Now, all of us face hardships in our lives. It's something that is impossible not to face, particularly in this broken world with us broken people. But the thing we need to face in those hardships is are we going to allow God to be there with us? Are we going to be open to God's presence with us in those troubles? Will we take the time to see God, to let God in, to feel God's presence in our lives, even when it might seem that God is asleep at the stern in those events? Now, from my own experience, can say that it can be hard for us in those difficult times to feel God's presence, but God is there with us all the same. God is there present even in our worst troubles. We see that through the story of Job. We see that with the disciples in the storm. And even though it doesn't seem like it, as we see in those stories, those dark times do conclude eventually. When they do conclude, I find, at least for myself, that I often wonder, why was I so worried about all of this before? 
why didn't I take the time to really feel God, to let God in, to be present with our Lord? And my hope for each and every one of you, whether you're here now or whether you're with us online, is that in those difficult moments, that you'll take that time to let God in, that you'll take that time to feel God's presence. And if it seems that God is asleep at the stern, that you'll have faith, faith that all things eventually will be better, and faith that no matter what, God is with you in the storm. And now, as you are able, please stand and let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. The only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary. Was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life. Who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead.
to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Tom, our governor, and Charles, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge the merit of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. 
and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And please share with one another a sign of peace. And peace to our folks online. And you may be seated. Well, again, happy Father's Day um, to all of our fathers. Uh, my understanding um, from uh, the helpful reminder that was placed uh, on my little prayer desk here uh, is that we do have some bookmarks. Um, I believe they are in the back, if my memory serves. So. For our fathers, uh, please grab one on your way out. Uh, once again, I want to thank everyone for um, continuing to social distance, to mask, uh, covering your nose and your face. So thank you so much for doing that. Um, while we're not doing a sign up for our services anymore, we do ask that you continue to sign in. So if uh, you're here in person and you have not done that yet, please sign in in the back. That way, if uh, something does happen, there is a COVID outbreak, we can let people know and they can get tested. And also, please do uh, continue to encourage those around you uh, to follow the example of our patron saint, a physician um, and to get vaccinated if at all possible. Um, I know some people can't yet because of age or can't for medical reasons, but if you can, please do and please do everything you can to help those who haven't been vaccinated yet or, or might not be able to be vaccinated so that they can be safe too. The rest of the announcements are in the back of your bulletin. Um, some of these things have already gone out through email. And if you aren't sure what I'm talking about with those emails, uh, please call or email us here at the church and we can get you on our email list uh, or our mailing list for others. Um, but we've got great things like the faith fact um, for this week, uh, as well as some other things going on in the community too. So we've got that there as well. After the service, I will be um, in the back uh, welcoming and, and greeting people uh, just for everyone's not just safety, but comfort. Uh, we still won't be doing shaking hands, but just wave, bow, that sort of thing. So, but I will be uh, glad to get to see all of you in the back after the service. Now, uh, normally this would be when we'd bring the offering plate up uh, and pass that around to everyone. Uh, but right now we're not doing that still. Uh, what I'd ask instead, we do have our offering plate in the back. Um, so please uh, place your offerings there for those with us online. Uh, you can always mail your offerings into the church as well. But for the time being, let us hold up in our hearts offerings of prayers of praise and thanksgiving to our Lord.
please stand as you are able for the start of our Eucharistic prayer, Prayer A. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth, O Lord, 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 glory be to thee, O Lord, God. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, holy Son. Holy and gracious Father, in thine infinite love, thou didst make us for thyself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, thou didst mercifully send Jesus Christ, thy only begotten and eternal Son, to share our humanity, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us unto thee, who art the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and there made an offering of himself in obedience to thy will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was betrayed unto suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks unto thee, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, 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 Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his blessed death, his mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. We offer unto thee these gifts. Sanctify them, we beseech thee, by thy Holy Spirit that they may be for thy people, the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Do thou likewise sanctify us, thy servants, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve thee in unity, constancy, and peace. And on the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, St. Luke, and all thy saints, into the joy of thine eternal kingdom. All this we ask through thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end.
now that I found the tab, uh, let us now uh, pray in the words that our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover once for all, is sacrificed for us. God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of the back table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always at thy mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, but speak the word of my name, and my soul shall be healed. of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body 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 of Christ, the bread of heaven.
And now, turning to our post-communion prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost give us these holy mysteries, for the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the midst of the body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of and we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, the world of God God in. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. concludes our service and thank you all here thank you all online and we will see you all soon